the truth. First takes in the house. Let's go. just heard Stephen A. Smith. So much is happening today. It is HBCU Wednesday. Stephen A. Hampton University will be highlighting. Doc Rivers will be talking to you one on one. I like that tie. Thank you very much. That looks um, 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 excuse me. Very excuse tall. me. Yeah. Excuse me. The blazer is kind of new as well. Let's, oh, let's I'm not sorry. That. Stephen A. I love the blazer well, too. Thank you so much. You look great. So, so it's a big day. A so, lot of news. We'll get to it. Uh, Marcus Spears will be back with us in just a bit, guys. But we're going to start with Ben Simmons here, as Stephen A. just mentioned. He is ready to take his talents elsewhere. He will not report to the opening of training camp next week and intends to never play another game for the franchise. Sources told our Adrian Wojnarowski Simmons hasn't spoken to the team since a late August meeting when he communicated this message to the Sixers officials. Simmons still has four years and over $146 million left on the max extension. He signed with Philadelphia in July of 2019. If he does not report, the Sixers could suspend him for failing to render services once preseason games begin, which could cost Simmons over 220000 for each game missed. That is real money. Uh, big perk with us, as you just saw. Stephen A., talk to me, though. What are you hearing? Well, first of all, Big Perk, I'm glad you're on the show with me this morning. You know, you talk around the league. You know I do. And I was on the phone all last night uh, talking to uh, various members of the Philadelphia 76ers organization as, long as, as well as folks on Ben Simmons' side as well. And that doesn't just include Rich Paul. Here's the bottom line. Ben Simmons does not want to be a part of the Philadelphia 76ers any longer. This is something that he declared just a couple of days after the season was over. Ultimately, he met with Doc Rivers and, 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 and the brass for the Philadelphia 76ers face-to-face. -face. He told them to their face month, months ago. He did not want to be in Philadelphia any longer. Rich Paul, his agent, initially tried to say, excuse me, let's wait a minute here. Understand, it's going to be hard. You got four years, $146.6 million left on your contract. It ain't like you're approaching the last year of your contract. This is a very arduous task and what have you. You need to be willing to sit out the damn season if you are going to make this move. Ben Simmons said, I don't give a damn, do it anyway. So, in other words, he has given the impression that he is willing to cost himself a year's salary in excess of $33 million in order to get the hell up out of Philadelphia. Obviously, if you're the Philadelphia 76ers, you're going to take the position. I'm not trying to get 20 cents on the dollar. This man has made it clear he doesn't want to be a part of Philadelphia any longer. Somehow, some way, it's become public information. And as a result of that reality, those teams that would be interested in him are not going to offer the bank because they know he wants out. So their mentality is, why should we give up the house in order to get you? Philadelphia recognizes that and is now holding their feet firmly to the ground. Their mentality, according to my sources, is simply this. When we look at the Philadelphia 76ers, a lot of people out there around the league, KP, have been talking about uh, former Commissioner David Stern and what he would do. Because the fact that, Ken, that Ben Simmons has made it clear he doesn't want to be a part of Philadelphia any longer, and he has no intentions of showing up to training camp, the former commissioner that was David Stern, God rest his soul, would have been finding folks all over the place. The Sixers are probably looking for that help from Commissioner Adam Silver. They may want him to step in and take the position that, excuse me, we don't get we don't get to sit up there, sign you to a max deal last year, you come back now and declare you want to be out, and as a result, you're not going to get traded, but we still got to pay you your money. Remember, before the season even begins, Ben Simmons is due 50% of his salary, I believe, by November 2nd. It's like $8.3 million. October 1st, another $8.3 million, November 1st to 2nd. So he's due about 50% of his salary before the season basically begins, essentially. And their mentality is we don't want to have to pay him. So now we got to take into account, pay, KP, the trade, uh, the trade scenarios that are available. You got teams like Sacramento, Minnesota, even Cleveland and others. Everybody's been calling about Ben Simmons. It's all a matter of what they have to offer. The Golden State Warriors have been hesitant from Jump Street because they don't believe Draymond Green and Ben Simmons is an ideal fit. So they've been reluctant to make that move because you'd have to pick one or the other. And you know Steph, Steph Curry and Klay Thompson are going to want um, uh, uh, Draymond Green to be there instead of Ben Simmons. The Portland Trailblazers, from, my, from what I'm told, 
Obviously, they're talking about C.J. McCollum. They're talking about Robin Covington. They're talking about a couple of first-round picks. They don't want to put it out there because you don't want to alienate C.J. McCollum in the event that you keep him. But nevertheless, it's something that they've been willing to offer. The Sixers have not been willing to bite. Right now, the Sixers are holding their feet firm to the fire because they don't want to give in and cave in and set a bad precedent by moving somebody who makes a demand to be moved when he still has four years left on his contract. That is the situation going on with the Philadelphia 76ers right now. And the bottom line is everything is just chaotic because Ben Simmons apparently is willing to sit out the season before he shows up to the Philadelphia 76ers. We both know KP could always change his mind. That could be just smoke, blowing smoke. But according to what I'm hearing, his position has been made clear months ago, and he's been incredibly consistent with the Sixers. He hasn't folded, bought a new $22 million mansion in Calabasas, okay? The Good Sixers were talking about wanting to meet up with him. He said, hell, they could fly out here if they want to, but I'm not flying to see them. That's his mentality right now. It seems like it's going to get a lot uglier before it gets better. KP, the floor is yours. I mean, everything that you said was spot on, Stephen. Eh? And, and you know what? Over the past couple of years, five or six years, I knew we were going to get to a point like this where we're dealing with two stubborn parties, all right? We're talking about Ben Simmons and Rich Paul along with a stubborn organization and the Philadelphia 76ers. And I'm not throwing shots at nobody. I'm saying that, like you was talking about, both of these parties are not willing to bend. And right now the 76ers are saying, you know what? We don't have to trade you. And they don't. They don't have to trade Ben Simmons. And I feel like this is going to get ugly for the simple fact that, like you said, I feel like it's going to come a point where Adam Silver is going to have to step in. And let me tell you how the system works for us when you get fined in the NBA, okay? And I know, you know, he gets a, a certain amount of money, like you said. I don't know if it's October 1st, November 1st, but he gets a certain percentage of his money up 50%. front. 50%. But I know he still... Okay, but I know he still have that other fifty on the back end. And yes. what I'm what, what I know about getting fined in the NBA is that they don't send you an invoice and they don't put a pink slip on your chair. No, they take their money out before it hits your account. And one of the things that I always preach to to guys that are in the NBA, to guys that was coming up beneath me, never give back your money. You work too hard to get to this point. Never give your letters back. From a guy that led the NBA in technical fouls, I regret it to this day the hundreds of thousands that I lost because I was just being stupid and foolish and giving back my money. Now, with that being said, I talked about this yesterday on the jump, Stephen A., is that think about the CBA in the next couple of years. Think about what the owner's going to do when that comes up. They're going to be waiting at the front door for guys, for, for the Players Association, for the simple fact that they're going to say, you know what, we tired of this. We didn't went through it with Anthony Davis. We didn't went through it with James Harden. Now we're going through it with Ben Simmons. And so with that being said, look, both parties right now, they're standing firm. Philly is not budging, nor is, neither is Ben Simmons. Listen, let me say this real quick. First of all, you've got folks that have questioned whether or not Ben – and Joel Embiid can gel. Mm -hmm. I'm told that the straw that broke the camel's back was obviously in the immediate aftermath of the loss to the Atlanta Hawks Game 7 Eastern Conference semifinals. I was there. When Doc Rivers said he doesn't know if Ben Simmons is his point guard of the future, mm -hmm. that definitely was a devastating blow. And Joel Embiid saying the play where Ben Simmons didn't take it in and dunk it, even though uh, – uh, Danilo Gallinari was behind him and some six-foot dude was in front of him. Uh, when Joel Embiid said that play in Atlanta came down and scored, probably determined the game. Those two things really is what made Ben Simmons dog it. I can't believe it's just those two things. I'm told that Doc Rivers, who's expected to be on the show a little bit later today, definitely had a conversation with him and, you know, essentially acknowledged that he could have chose better words and whatever. But Doc Rivers has been incredibly, incredibly supportive of him. Uh, since he arrived in Philadelphia, he even came on the show last year arguing with me about how, you know, the shooting wasn't important and what have you. So that's not something for Ben Simmons to lean on. Nevertheless, he seems to be looking for an excuse to lean on anything in order to get the hell up out of Philly. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And again, we'll have much more on this with Doc Rivers a little bit later. Perk, uh, you'll be back with us in just a bit, but we are also uh, minutes away from some other things that we need to discuss, including... Big Ben, the other Ben that we want to discuss right here on First Take. So that's coming up right after this break.
All right, I guess we're going to stay with Big Ben right now. Okay, yeah. we'll do that right now. Um, so it's not a secret. Stephen A. Steelers have struggled a lot on offense. A lot of question marks surrounding Big Ben. And if he can still lead a team to the promised land, all the ire can be directed at Ben. The offensive line has struggled to protect him. Here's some perspective on just how poorly the Steelers have done at protecting their future Hall of Fame quarterback. Big Ben was contacted while running or throwing 10 times on week two and 18 times through two games this season. His most times in that span. All right. Uh